He'll be back in a second. Please be seated. Would you join me in thanking our piper, Mr. Bruce McDonald? Good afternoon, everyone. Dean Wichtel, honored guests, fellow veterinarians, student veterinarians, ladies and gentlemen. If we haven't yet met, my name is Peter Conlon and I'm the Associate Dean of Students at the Ontario Veterinary College. And I'm very pleased to welcome you to this white coat ceremony and celebration that recognizes the point at which this class begins the final phase of the DVM program. The veterinary journey that they began at OVC on September 8, 2015 will reach a major milestone one afternoon in the week of June the 10th, 2019. Although we don't know exactly which day yet, but as soon as we do, we'll let you know. <laughs> when, if everybody, they and us, have done our jobs correctly, they will each receive the degree of Doctor of Veterinary Medicine and recite the veterinarian's oath. Since that day in 2015 and until that day in 2019, there have been and will be many milestones in their life as a student veterinarian. Perhaps some of them pass with little recognition of their significance, but I'm sure that today's event will stand out. And that is because, although they will undoubtedly enter a wide range of careers, some clinical and some non-clinical, today each Golden Kraken will participate in a formal robing or cloaking that heralds their clinical role in the year ahead. Let's take a moment, if we could, to look at the origin of white coats being a symbol of the health professions. Until the late 19th century, since interactions with patients and with clients were always thought of as very serious and formal interactions, physicians and veterinarians, at that time, of course, always men, dressed in black to indicate the formality of the occasion. The white coat was actually introduced to medicine and veterinary medicine at the end of the 19th century as a symbol of cleanliness and to demonstrate that these fields were becoming more and more science-based. In veterinary medicine, this also coincided with the slowly increasing emergence of companion animal practice. However, the significance of the white coat is interestingly much more than that. The foundation of all professions is candor or truth. And that word candor is derived from the Latin candidus, meaning white. So importantly, the white coat symbolizes the trust that veterinarians must earn from their clients and the scientific search for the truth on which that trust is based. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Jeffrey Wichtel, who is the Dean of the Ontario Veterinary College. Thank you, Peter, and welcome everyone. Special welcome to our special guests who you'll be hearing from later. Certainly uh, parents, friends, supporters, and most of all the students. It's a, it's a milestone, as Dr. Conlon pointed out, and uh, it marks, yes, the beginning of a year of intensive clinical training, and of course, you know, because you're here, we believe you're ready for that. 
But Dr. Conlon also mentioned trust, and it's very much about that. Uh, it's a transition to a point where we believe, and I, I think you believe, that you're ready to be entrusted to care for the health of animals and to gain the trust of the care, caretakers of those animals. So it's, it's a big deal. And I think when we talk amongst ourselves, we often mention a degree of transition and change in character that happens to students between third and fourth year. And uh, it's, a, it's a certain maturity, a certain poise, certainly a certain apprehension, but perhaps a different way of thinking also. Uh, you're leaving behind the days of uh, multiple choice questions where there are yes and no answers to a realm where oftentimes there isn't obvious yes and no answers, that there's many ways of doing things. And that is, of course, the art of veterinary medicine, which you'll be practicing uh, beginning very soon. Uh, and it's an exciting time, uh, it is an apprehensive time, but the reason uh, so much of it is gray is because in addition to the biology and pathology and physiology that goes into the patients in front of you, uh, there is the human, the emotional, the personal, the societal and ethical issues that also go into what we do as veterinarians and that's what makes it a profession. Uh, so, so an exciting time, uh, I encourage you to embrace that sort of uncertainty that comes with uh, clinical veterinary medicine uh, because along with that comes some very close personal relationships. We, we all went into veterinary medicine thinking we'd be working with animals. I think you know by now that the veterinary profession is very much a human profession as well and that uh, some of the things that I remember from my first uh, clinical years are some of the very strong personal relationships I gained with my colleagues, with my team, veterinary technicians who saved me many times, uh, and uh, certainly with the clients and the farmers that I interacted with, these are some of the memories that I hold strongest. So embrace those. In fact, those particular relationships through this clinical year will be the ones that sustain you when you get worn out and tired, which you will do, and uh, sometimes you'll even doubt yourself. So a, a really great milestone, and I thank you all for being here, and I look forward to hearing what our other speakers have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. The College of Veterinarians of Ontario is the provincial licensing body for veterinarians that also protects the public's interest. Dr. Stephen Jacobs is the president of the CBO. Dr. Jacobs. Good afternoon, Dr. Conlon, Dean Wichtel, honored guests, and most importantly, members of OVC class of 2019 the Golden Krakens. I think I mispronounced that anyways. I got, I got tutored on it earlier and it completely gone out of my mind. What is it? Is it Krakens, Krakens, Krakens? Krakens, It is indeed my pleasure to bring you greetings from the College of Veterinarians of Ontario on behalf of the College Council. It is a privilege to participate in this ceremony where each of you will be presented with your white coat as you prepare to enter your final year. I admit I am a bit envious. We only had bl old blue coats for all of our time. We never had white coats and coveralls. And from day one, that's what we had. And they kept that way until the final year when they bore a few noteworthy stains. No white coats for us. You are on the verge of becoming a veterinarian the realization of a tremendous goal. As you take the next step in your journey, I encourage you to consider what it means to be a member of the veterinary profession. A privilege, an expectation to meet standards, a commitment to ongoing learning, a source of public trust, a shared community of knowledge and support. It is my hope that you will consider the CBO as a partner in your professional community of knowledge and support, along with the OVMA, OVC, and your fellow colleagues. And allow me, if you will, to put in an earnest recommendation to consider serving on council or committees as part of your professional career. We need the voices of the future, your voices, around our table. But that's for later. Today is your day to savor and enjoy the white coat you will wear as you complete phase four at the Ontario Veterinary College is a symbol of professionalism. Welcome to the profession, our profession, 
I wish each of you continued success. Thank you very much, Stephen. The Ontario Veterinary Medical Association is the organization that represents veterinarians and our interests in the province. Dr. Gwen June is the president of the OVMA. Dr. June. Thank you, Dr. Conlon, and welcome, everybody. It's an honor for me to be here today on behalf of the OVMA to officially welcome you into the clinical portion of your education. I'm sure it's been a long road to get here, one that's likely had its share of challenges, and you deserve recognition for the hard work and dedication that each of you has put into your education so far. Over the next year, you'll move from lectures and labs to hands-on real-life experiences. You'll learn valuable clinical skills and knowledge that will prepare you for your entry into the veterinary profession, no matter the career path you choose. One of my most vivid fourth year memories is from my equine clinical rotation. I'm a small animal type. <laughs> I have hay fever allergies and a need for a good night's sleep. I was called in to assist a colicking horse. I stood by the stall, runny nose and all, and I could see the horse sweating profusely. I was told that it had probably ruptured its stomach. I saw the care and attention offered to the animal and owner. I remember the kindness of Dr. John Baird after the horse had been transferred to surgery, telling me to go home after staying up all night. The white coat that you received today is a symbol of the trust and responsibility that you will take on as you complete the final step in your journey as a veterinarian. Over the next year, you will put your wealth of knowledge into practice to heal pets and help people. This is what you've been working for so hard, and I urge you to use this opportunity to soak in as much information as you can and truly enjoy the experience. As you move through your final year of school, remember that whether you're seeking assistance in finding veterinary employment, negotiating that first contract, or dealing with the stress of fourth year rotations, OVMA is here to help. Please don't hesitate to contact us. As you consider which rotations to take, we invite you to consider OVMA's annual conference and student symposium as one of your options. It's a great way to augment your education in areas of interest to you and get a close-up look at the profession and the many potential career paths it offers. OVMA is here to support you, and we look forward to doing so throughout each stage of your veterinary career. Congratulations, and I wish all of you the best of luck in the coming year. Thank you very much, Gwen. Much of your fourth year will be in the uh, Health Sciences Centre. Dr. Stephanie Nykamp, who is the Associate Dean Clinical Program, oversees the operations of the entire Health Sciences Centre. Dr. Nykamp is also a faculty member in the Department of Clinical Studies. Dr. Nykamp. Thank you very much. Dr. Conlon forgot to mention a member of 2019 Krakens, too. Yes. <laughs> I'm very proud to be so. So um, my role is to welcome you officially to the Health Sciences Centre and uh, the very busy year that you have to come. And I wanted to uh, share with you some past experiences that our clients have had with the students. Just to remind you that although the nights may be long and some of the days may be tough and there may be ups and downs, that you are an appreciated and valued member of our team. And you really are. And our clients say that better than I could ever. And as you know, I don't like to make speeches. So I'm going to use their words and not mine. So this is feedback that we get a survey from the clients every single month. And we get feedback in every single one of those surveys that references the students in some way or another. So this is from this year's class. This is feedback that, that you are going to have to live up to, and I know you can. <laughs> so thanks to the fourth year student whose smile lit up the room. She is the only reason I left my dog for care at OBC. She was there with us in the evening, and again when we arrived the next morning, she made me feel comfortable and gave me the confidence that my dog was in good hands. We would especially like to acknowledge the fourth year student for their kindness and their compassion. 
We were impressed with how well the students did their exams on day one or two of their rotation, and yet managed to engage us in conversation throughout that process. The fourth year student was very good, kept me up to date with Chico's progress and impending surgery. She treated Chico with such compassion. The fourth year student was awesome. He was very helpful in answering all of my questions. I could tell how much he loved Bentley. He was very good with them, and he is going to be a fabulous veterinarian. The senior veterinary student went beyond any expectations to keep us informed and gave Chinook excellent care. This young man will be a wonderful doctor and will show a positive reflection on OBC. The student that was helping on the night we arrived made me feel more relaxed and explained what was happening as our cat was extremely sick. The student doctor was very attentive and went above and beyond to give Rocky the very best possible care as well as providing comfort to us as concerned pet parents. And lastly, I wanted to let you know that this wonderful lady, what this wonderful lady has added to our lives. On the very first night when I brought in my dear dog, I was ex experienced a very warm and understanding, um, understanding of what we were going through. She was very caring, immediately took her notes and asked what she needs to, but really cared. Our dog loved her, and it's in this love that's keeping him alive. She is his guardian angel, a beautiful, caring lady. Not only does she have exemplary skills as a veterinarian, but she is also a very gifted and loving, beautiful human being. <laughs> so, as I said, you have a lot to live up to. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I know that you can, and I want you to know that, again, you are an extremely valued member of our team, and we wish you the very, very best, and anything that you need throughout the coming year, you know where my office is. <laughs> Thank you very much, Stephanie. For clarification, I should um, say that Dr. Nightcamp is one of the class's uh, honorary class presidents. That is a high honor, and they have made an excellent choice. Dr. Don Trout is the coordinator of the final year, or phase four, of the DBM program. Dr. Trout is a large animal surgeon and a faculty member in the Department of Clinical Studies. Dr. Trout. So for you, Stephen. So normally in these situations, you know, it goes that uh, as they lead to different speakers, the most important one is at the last. <laughs> you know, Prime Minister Trudeau, <laughs> Premier Wynne, President Trump. <laughs> Obviously, this is the opposite. And for you folks sitting here, I know you're going, Hmm, I didn't think he had any other clothes besides <laughs> and coveralls. So now you know I do. So my job here is to give you folks uh, a brief summary of what's involved in the final year of phase four. So the idea behind phase four is to take all the knowledge and skills and all the good attributes that these folks have gained either through the whole education process, and from you folks out there, molding them over all the years you've known them, and for the last three years at OVC. And take all those good attributes and plug them into kind of a more real world clinical situations, both here at OVC and out uh, in practices than that external to OVC. So, how do we do that? Well, that's the fourth year is a little bit unique in two things. One, it's the first time these folks down here have actually been able to select an emphasis on the, the type of species or group of species that they want to study kind of in depth. And how do they do that? Each one of them down here has picked one of four streams, either like a small animal stream which, as you might imagine, that's going to be companion, companion animal, dogs, cats, guinea pigs, birds, other things, reptiles, not dinosaurs. <laughs> or on the other end of it, you could, kind of the opposite end, they could have picked a food animal stream that they're dealing with dairy cattle, beef cattle, sheep, goats, uh, pigs, uh, poultry, that type of thing. 
and then kind of veering a little bit toward the middle. Uh, for those folks that are interested in primarily in horses, there's an equine stream. And then pretty much right in the middle, there's uh, essentially a stream that's a mixed stream that's an equal amount of both large and small animal. And here at OVC, it's called the Rural Community Practice Stream because that's the most likely place you're gonna be in that situation. So that's one unique thing. And the second unique thing is how long the fourth year is. So really, they're gonna start their final year here in the early part of May. And they're gonna continue that for the next 48 months until the end of next April, 2019. But the good news for them and you is that they really only owe OVC and their education 38 out of those 48 weeks. And during those 38 weeks, what do they have to do? Again, there's two big components. The first one is all of them, no matter what stream they select, do an eight-week externship sometime between May and the end of August in a mixed practice where they're exposed to both large and small animal veterinary medicine. And as you might imagine, those are going to be a little bit like that rural community practice situation, but not all of them. And even within that mixed practice, that practice will let them kind of um, emphasize you know, their interests. So that's one component, everybody does that. The second component is that, again, between that start date in May and that end date the following April, they need to do 30 weeks of rotations. And those rotations are one or two or three weeks long, just depending on what you take, that are either the clinical rotations that are either here at OVC or they're external to OVC. So let's say at OVC, they could do something as general as uh, we have a small animal primary care practice. It's just like a fancy general practice uh, out in the real world. Or they could be a little more focused on certain things and do, let's say, small animal medicine or surgery or large animal medicine surgery or they could get, have even more focus and do, let's say, ophthalmology and that. Those are just components of what they would do during their, their uh, rotations in OVC. Externally, they can do the same thing in like a general practice or let's say a fancier, um, more referral type practice, or they could get as uh, specialized on the extreme, so to speak, as to work or spend time in a zoo or a marine mammal park. So all of those 30 week, 38 weeks are filled with these rotations plus their externship. But the good thing about this, when you think about it, is they are gonna be doing what they've wanted to do since they started out thinking about veterinary medicine or here at OVC as they've gone through these previous years they're gonna actually be doing veterinary medicine out in the real world. So, you folks, you folks, <laughs> and you folks, join me in congratulating them for getting this far and wishing them well and having fun in the next year. Thank you very much, Don. So we're now going to present to each member of the Golden Krakens their white coat. So class, a little bit of direction here. <laughs> It'll be fine, don't worry. I'd ask that you stand row by row, and when I read out your name, please go to the nearest aisle and then come to the front where Drs. Trout and Nykamp will present you with your coat. Then please receive congratulations from our um, speakers at the front and then return to your seat. Uh, please remain standing when you get back to your, your place. So Ashley, it's always hard to be a leader, but I know, you, I know you can do it. Ashley Albright. A 
Amanda Avison. <laughs> Hannah Bagnell. <laughs> Caitlin Barber. Kevin Barbosa. Christina Barnes. Kelia Bascom. Catherine Belanger. Marissa Bessel. Jennifer Brenner. Alyssa Brown. Julia Bolfon. <laughs> Courtney Burstein. <laughs> Amy Capraro, my apologies. <laughs> Angelique Castello. Goldia Chan. <laughs> Rebecca Chant. <laughs> Samantha Clark. <laughs> Carmen Ko. Amber Covello. <laughs> Jaden Dales. <laughs> Sarah DePaulo. Manali Thesai. <laughs> Navleen Dollywall. <laughs> Kristen Deanst. Sarah DeVito. <laughs> Kelly Donaldson. <laughs> Cassandra Dusson. <laughs> Thesuri Egal. Robert France. <laughs> Jacqueline Gallien. <laughs> Alina Gardner.
Stephanie Gerritsen. Deanna Glasgow. <laughs> Hannah Golightly. <laughs> Lisa Gordon. <laughs> Rebecca Greenwood. Jacqueline Guest. <laughs> Megan Haley. <laughs> Ashley Harrison. Laura Hartman. Stuart Higginbotham. Macy Holliday. Alexandre Jalbert. Jordan James. <laughs> Samantha Johnson. <laughs> Brittany Jones. <laughs> Megan Kitts. Eric Kwok. <laughs> Natalie Lapointe. Anna Lazurko. Monica Lekowitz. <laughs> Sumin Lee. <laughs> Mitchell Littlejohn. <laughs> Brittany Lostraco. Latasha Ludwig. <laughs> Ho Yi Louis. <laughs> Courtney Lunn. <laughs> Matthew McCormick. Elena MacDonald. <laughs> Brianne McKay. <laughs> Catherine McNaughton. <laughs> Kaylee Mahoney. Anuja Mariam Palay. <laughs> Ken 
Candace Martins. Noreen Merchant. Jasmine Morel Balai. Nicole Norris. Rania Ogrodnik. Ellery Ustuizen. Alexandria Oswell. Daniel Pekoski. Matthias Peel. Julia Parrott. Eric Perrin. Derek Peters. Adriana Presti. Claire Redman. Jonathan Riccio. <laughs> Megan Riggy. <laughs> Max Roachman Fowler. <laughs> Laura Rooney. Megan Roke. <laughs> Samantha Rudkins. <laughs> Julia Saturno. Garrett Schulenberg. John Paul Satimi. Shannon Shum. Paula Simons. Kyla Skopovius. Christine Smith. Anna Sonic. David Sparks. Andrea Storm Souk. <laughs> Catherine Sum. <laughs> Joey Tang.
Danielle Terrace. Courtney Thomas. Shauna Thomas. Brian Thompson. Tracy Toe. Marika Van Shake. Julia Wan. Alicia Ann Ward. Caitlin Weaver. Eastman Wellsford. Katie White. Rebecca Wilson. Stephanie Wong. Catherine Witcherly. <laughs> Krakens, could I ask you to turn and face the audience? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the class of OBC 2019. Thank you. Please be seated, everyone. It's now my pleasure to introduce the co-presidents of the Golden Krakens, Mr. Garrett Schulenberg and Mr. Eastman, Eastman Wellsford. Uh, just quickly, I'm going to apologize for my voice and also for not shaking anyone's hand at the time. <laughs> stiffed everybody. Just stiffed everyone. Anyway, hello everyone and welcome once again to our distinguished guests, families, friends, mentors, faculty, alumni, and the ever so talented Golden Krakens. Thank you to Dr. Conlin, Dean Wichtel, Dr. Jacobs from the CVO, Dr. June from the OVMA, and Dr. Nykamp, our honorary class president and Dr. Trout for the wisdom and support that they have shown us today and throughout the past three years. We have come a long way and truly it would not have been possible without their help and guidance. Well, Krakens, here we are. <laughs> Almost three years from our professional welcoming ceremony. Can we get a quick show of hands? Who had no idea that this is what they were getting themselves into? <laughs> yeah, neither do we. No, no idea. 
Um, as we sat down to write this speech, it was a no-brainer that we express our overwhelming gratitude for the support that our friends and family have given us. We're sure you had no idea what you were getting yourselves into either, but how exactly did you all support us through these last three years? Well, for starters, you probably took a lot of late-night phone calls from frantic Krakens, exclaiming that they would never remember the structures within the guttural pouch of a horse. <laughs> Surely you've convinced your Kraken to pry their eyes away from their notes begrudgingly to eat dinner with you at least once, and even they probably had antibiotic drug mnemonics floating through their mind the whole time. You've also heard someone mutter the words botryoid rhabdomyosarcoma and forgave us when we forgot what that meant five seconds afterwards. You sent care package upon care package, including notes of inspiration and candy to encourage us to keep going, not to give up, and to remind us why we chose this crazy journey to begin with. You stuck by us through thick and thin, were patient with us, sorry, and always let us know that you were proud and that we would make it through. For that, we cannot thank you enough. There is absolutely no way that any of us would be here today without that love and that support. Remember three years ago when we stood up and applauded our supporters? Well, we think that now, at the end of our third year of veterinary school and the beginning of our final clinical year, we owe them more than ever. So, Krakens, once again, if you could please stand, turn around, and give a round of applause to those who deserve it most. Not too much, not too much. <laughs> Krakens, it has almost been three years since we all sat here together to receive our blue coats. And here we are today to exchange them for white ones. Guys, let me tell you, you look great. <laughs> Every single one of us has earned this coat, from late nights and early mornings to grueling exam schedules to pretending you can read an abdominal radiograph. <laughs> you've earned that white coat. Third year exams and the NAVLI has nothing on us. But, as the saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility, and it's time to put our big kid pants on and start being adults. It's time to put all that knowledge into practice with real cases and real patients. It's going to be a whole new world with its own unique trials and tribulations, but we, we, all have the faith, we have all the faith in the world that you will persevere, and every single one of you will soon sport the title Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. So remember back to our first year when someone would ask you something like, Hey, Eastman, can you tell me why my dog keeps sneezing? No. Well, now you can think of at least three reasons why. <laughs> Congratulations to the class of 2019, the soon-to-be DVMs, the Golden Krakens. Thank you very much, Garrett and Eastman. So as we close the formal part of our program today, I want to sincerely again thank our speakers for their encouraging words, and you family members and friends for attending and for the critical support that you provide to your favorite Kraken. It means a great deal to them, I know, and also to us. Thank you also to the Phase 2 Ruby Rhinos and Phase 1 Sapphire Snow Leopards who volunteered today and help make the event run smoothly. Uh, Stephanie Burgoyne, Natalie Chow, Anise de Callaway tolk Hayden Marshall, Quinn Marshall, and Angela, Angela Thiessen. I also want to thank Kevin Hogg from OVC's IT department, who is enabling us to provide a live, global, yet maybe universal, webcast <laughs> of this event. Who knows who's watching? And video recording it to capture it for posterity. Ross Gillies from Open Learning and Educational Support for making sure that this worked throughout. And uh, Karen Mantel, our Marketing and Communications Officer, who's our photographer today. And of course, again, Mr. McDonald, our Piper. And also to OVC's Manager of Student Affairs, Elizabeth Lowinger, who is at another um, event in the United States today, um, who put the whole day together. And also to Amy Tremaine, our Manager of Alumni Affairs, who um, made sure everything worked, and that's a lot, making sure everything worked. So 
Uh, I wonder if you'd join me in thanking them for all their work. There will be a reception uh, now in the concourse of this building, just outside where you came in. And uh, But before joining the reception class, I wonder if you would join Karen um, outside on the steps near the University Centre so we can get a great picture of all of you. And family and friends, that's a great photo opportunity for you as well uh, before you um, join the reception. So thank you again, everybody, and uh, we are dismissed. <laughs>